Right, welcome back. This is now a brand new section that we're going to start today that will be mobile backend as a service. So I'm going to have a look at two different service providers and the one will be backendless and the other one will be Firebase. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on backendless, but we will be creating a functional app using backendless. Okay, so the first question is, what is MBAAS? So what is a mobile backend as a service? So this first link that comes up, and you can see I'm using an incognito mode here, which means that it's not saving any of my previous searches. So this is an article written by the backendless guys. So if you click on this link, it gives you really a nice overview. I'm not going to read everything there for you. So you can go into this link and just have a look at what is a mobile backend as a service. And you can see some other questions that was asked also by other people is why use a mobile backend as a service? So it empowers developers by completely abstracting the service side infrastructure, which lets them focus on delivering better user experiences instead of dealing with service. Set up and maintenance of the service, prepare the infrastructure for scaling, building APIs, and so forth. What is it? Uh, it's mobile backend as a service, sometimes referred to as MBAAS in the abbreviation. Happy Tech World refers to the practice of using a service provider to power the backend services, such as business logic and data management of an app. In short, it's a way for us as developers to not really worry about the service side of our applications. So both Backendless and Firebase gives us a way to not really worry about the server side of things, and that includes user management, it includes database management, and so forth. And we'll have a look at uh, some of those options. So if you are still uncertain about what is a mobile backend as a service, you can go and read this article, What is Mobile Backend as a Service? So go to your browser to backendless.com so that we can see what services they offer for us. Okay, right off the bat, you can see they say it's a full stack visual app development platform, complete visual app builder that makes apps intuitive to develop and easy to manage, no code required. So obviously, we're not really interested in the no code part because we want to create a Flutter application. Okay, so there is a complete visual app builder, but we will not be using it. Okay, so there's user management, there's a real-time database, there's API services, there's the UI builder that they talked about there, there's push notifications, and then there's the pro version of it as well. Uh, you can also have a look at this video where the CEO just goes through what is Backendless. So you can see how Backendless works for you. There's API management, there's user management. So I don't need to worry about how do I create some sort of system where I can log in people and save their specific user-related data. There's real-time apps, there's legacy data to mobile, location-aware apps, document management. Uh, if you have a look at by developers for everyone, you can go into the user service and you can see there's all the different languages it supports. There's Java, there's Kotlin. So if you're going to Android development, you'll use either Kotlin or Java. There's Objective-C and Swift for iOS development. There's JavaScript, REST, and there's also Codeless. But you can also see there's Dart. And for Flutter, obviously, we'll be using Dart. So you can see there's the database API, there's the files API, so you can save. So database is for normal documents or just data that you want to save online. And then there's files also where you can upload a file and then refer back to that file later on. There's real-time messaging, there's geolocation, there's push notifications, there's data caching, atomic counters, email marketing, and so forth. Right, so I'm not going to bore you with a lot of things on their website. I mean, you can go through it. So what we maybe should look at is the pricing structure. So if you go and have a look at individuals and small businesses, you can see that you can start for free. So if you go to back in this cloud pricing, you will see there's basically three plans there. There's Springboard, there's Cloud9, and there's Cloud99. So this is the one that you start off with. And you can see there's a 14-day trial for this Cloud 99, so you can try out the Cloud 99 plan as soon as you start or you register. Now, the Springboard plan, you will see is $0 a month. So the Springboard plan is something that you can buy through the marketplace or you can earn it. And I'll show you how to earn the Springboard plan. And it's quite nice if you look at the detailed comparison. And one thing that is quite nice is the API calls per month that will be 
unlimited. You've got 200 objects in cash. If you go down to security, uh, there's custom API keys, there's custom security roles that's unlimited. If you go to the database, there's 200 tables, there's 400,000 data objects in a table. Uh, there's certain number of operations and transactions, there's real-time connections, there's listeners per real-time connection. Your file storage is one gig. Your push notifications is unlimited and stuff like that. So you can go through it and see what it gives you and then decide on which plan you want to go. But you look at if you look at the Springboard plan, you can see it's available upon completion of back endless missions. And we'll quickly have a look at that also. Alternatively, you can unlock the plan through the back endless marketplace. And for more info on how to unlock the Springboard plan, you can click there. Intended use is for prototyping or for development. So if you want to start off with a small app, uh, well, I, th I think you can you can probably support a quite big app with just uh, the Springboard plan. It depends on how many users you're going to have. Okay, so we've got three plans there, Springboard, Cloud9, and Cloud99. You cannot upgrade anything in the Springboard plan, but you can do it in the Cloud9 and Cloud99. For example, if you needed 210 database tables, uh, you won't be able to do that. You will need to go through to Cloud9 and Cloud99 where you can buy new database tables. Right, so these are the different plans that you have. So let's go to the next part, which is developers. Now, you, if you look at the languages, you can see that there's a lot of languages that is supported. So there's iOS and Java Android if you go to the native mobile application development and there's .NET, there's Codeless, there's REST API, there's, there's Cloud Code, there's JavaScript, there's a UI builder. But the one that we are interested in is for Flutter. So if you go to Flutter, you can go to the API documentation and this becomes now your textbook for how Backendless works in Flutter. So you can look at their welcome page, you can read through what is a backendless application? How do you create your first app? But we'll go through all those as we do our application. There's a quick start guide. There's a client side setup. What do you need to do? Uh, you need to go to your pubspec.yaml file and add this package and so forth. Uh, you can go to blocking and non blocking APIs, error handling, error codes, and then you can see there's some bigger sections. And these sections include the user service API, the database API. For example, if I go to the database API, I can go and see how do I save new objects. And if, I, if it's only a single object, this is the, uh, if I have a custom class, this is what I'll need to call in order to save, with an example, uh, how to save that specific object to back in this. Okay, so you've got a nice textbook if you want to go and have a look at uh, maybe something that we did not cover here. So what we will be covering will be the user service and the database API, and also not everything inside of the database API. So we'll be covering user service and the database API. You can go also go and have a look at real-time database. I'm not going to go into that real-time messaging. We will, we will look at something in Firebase with real-time also. There's an email API, there's push notifications. So if you want to learn about push notifications, there's the uh, Android setup, the iOS setup, the management, and the API that you can use. There's a files API, there's logging API, there's caching API, there's atomic counters, there's app management, and then there's Zapier integration also. Also a nice uh, little feature there, Zapier. If you go to zapier.com, you can have some nice integrations with your app. Okay, so this one, backendless.com slash docs, Flutter will give you your textbook for backenders and you'll get everything from here. So when we will be creating the app, where did I get my information from? Well, it will be exactly from these pages. So this is where you get the information. Then also, if you go to support, and I would really recommend this if you're looking at working or creating your app with backenders, go to support and join their Slack channel. So that Slack channel there is open for everyone. There's also a support forum that works very nice in both of these. They are really fast to answer your questions. So make sure that you join their Slack channel if you are going to use Backenders, where you can just quickly ask a question and probably get feedback within a few hours. Right, and that's it for this video. You may go through all of these others and go and read about Backendless and what they offer. I will see you in the next one when we register a new account.